Cooperative Extension is a partnership of county, state, and federal agencies that began in North Carolina in 1914. The idea was to educate the public about new methods in agriculture, soil conservation, and food preservation. Today, that partnership includes NC State and NCANT universities and the U.S. Department of Agriculture providing all North Carolina citizens with easy access to knowledge generated by public universities. Thank goodness for Cooperative Extension. All the agents who serve across our counties throughout North Carolina and across America. This is one of the unique things that we have in this country. There's nothing like it anywhere in the world. The state of North Carolina is amazing. Uh, you know, coast, mountains, Piedmont, everything in between, rural and urban, and all this variety. This is a project of our current master gardener group. This is our, their What makes community. a difference, what Extension does to make a difference, is we're there in communities, connected to communities. You know, one of the things that has guided the Cooperative Extension movement is, and is still true today, is how many citizen volunteers we have at the local level who talk with us constantly about what are the needs that you have uh, in your local community and how can we best address those needs. So it's very locally driven, so it stays relevant by that type of advisory system that exists at the state level, the federal level, and particularly at the local level. Extension has seen recurring federal and state budget cuts of $14 million since 2008. The result is a loss of more than 150 campus and county jobs. The recognition of Extension's 100th anniversary last year became a time to reevaluate and focus on long-term goals for the future. We talked about in our strategic plan an element or philosophy of high-tech and high-touch. Not unlike the campus and the county connection, you have to have both. We think you have to have the technology side of it because that's where information is delivered, how people connect with that new information that's out there, and feel connected to each other. Not surprisingly, Extension will continue to focus on agriculture, food, and 4-H youth development. In agriculture, the primary focus will be on traditional agriculture and livestock, commercial and consumer horticulture, and organic production. As our populations increase, food production is also going to increase. As our food production increases, the amount of water that we're going to need for the crops satisfy the demands are going to increase. So we're going to be looking at ways to conserve water and improve the quality of the water that we have. Extension will concentrate on the growing interest in local foods, community and school gardens, food preservation, food safety and health. Community garden has become a big part of our program working not only with church organizations, but with local civic groups. Everyone wants to see now, especially the urban population, where their food is coming from, how is it being grown, what kind of pesticides or no pesticides are being put on it. So we are developing a lot of those curriculas to work with our local extension offices to provide that information to our publics. I pledge my head to clear thinking, my heart to greater loyalty. Through 4-H youth development, hundreds of thousands of young people learn how to serve their communities. 4-H is one of the largest youth organizations, only second to the public school. Learning by doing is the motto, trying to teach leadership development. Let's all look at Megan. 4-H has always been strong in teaching leadership skills. In the future, there will be added emphasis on healthy living and other life skills, and there will be more focus on STEM. And we even go further to talk about our STEAM program, science, technology, engineering, agriculture, and mathematics. Our robotics program has really caught on throughout the state and we're going as far as having robotics camps. All of this continues to teach the young people about math and science and trying to get them involved in those various fields. Our farmers these days have so much uh, new technology and science at their hands that having them um, learn it early on and be excited about it and see its application uh, in the production side with the youth 
that's going to be exciting to see where we go. Extension will continue to serve all 100 counties and the eastern band of the Cherokee. That continuity and that breadth has, I think, been one of the main reasons why agriculture has been so successful in North Carolina, uh, in addition to the amazing research that we do from the investment in higher education. This is important. We value our public schools in North Carolina and our colleges and universities. Um, we value uh, taking care of our land and our green spaces and our coast and our mountains, all of these things that God gave us. But it is so important that we focus on developing our people, giving them an opportunity to grow and to learn and to work together and to develop a vision for the future. And when you think back to those days when Booker T. Washington invited George Washington Carver down to Tuskegee Institute to head up his new horticulture program, and they had that horse-drawn wagon they called the Jessup Wagon, and they took their ag research out into rural Alabama, and they delivered it door to door out into the community where people live. And some hundred odd years later, here I am doing, in essence, the very same thing. We take the university-based research and information and we disseminate it out into the community where people live. Now, I don't show up in a, in a horse-drawn wagon now. I drive a Prius, but the basic concept is, is still the same and that's the beauty of it to, to me. And I'm, I'm proud to be a part of that continued uh, tradition. And we're going back to a lot of the bases. A lot of the things that we did as a cooperative extension organization years ago, it's just rolling back around. We are so pleased of those pioneers that got us to this point. It's a whole different mindset of extension educators with new ideas, new creativity, but in a lot of cases, we still have to go back to the history books and see how they did it. We don't ever want to get away from the basics and forget those who got us to this point.